welcome back to my channel today let's talk about living in the uk i've been living in the uk for about five years now the first thing i want to talk about is the weather so when i first started to consider jackpot it was either canada uk or us for me uh, well the weather was one of the things that sold the uk for me amongst other things of course winter year is generally mild there are some regions of the uk that are colder I live in England and in England the more north you go, the colder it gets. Well I can say the same for Scotland or Wales. Summer may not be all that great here because sometimes it feels like it's very short and usually you will find that it still rains during summer. Um, in fact the UK weather can be said to be quite unpredictable. It can get cold one minute and hot the next or dry one second and raining in the next. This is just the downside of the weather but on the positive it is rare to experience extreme weather conditions our winter year is never as bad as in canada or other colder places however our summer here may not be as hot as you'll find in other european countries the next thing i want to talk about is security uk is generally safe people can leave their homes without locking the doors you can travel on the roads at any time of the day without fear of kidnap or highway robbery. Well, that being said, there are some areas where houses get boggled. In terms of security, London and areas closer to London might be more unsafe compared to other areas further from London. And also in London, there's a higher prevalence of knife violence compared to other parts of the UK. There's also a rising number of acid attacks. Um, I don't live in London and when I was considering what part of the UK to settle in, the level of insecurity in London made me not even consider it at all as I don't consider it a safe place to raise children. Another thing I love about the UK is how polite they are. In fact, the Brits are known as the masters of politeness. They are generally warm, kind and honest, um, at the, well, but at the end of the day, you'd find that they're just human beings just like you and I. After all, even in the 12 disciples of Jesus, there was a Judas. Here you'll find the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah? Um, in terms of politeness, when walking on the road and they make eye contact with you, it is a norm for them to give you a brief smile. Some people may call it the British smile. Now, don't be fooled by that smile because they may not be a fan of you, but they would still give you a smile. Um, this brings me to Brits being seen as fake. Some people will say that they will smile at you when they are with you and they can say something negative about you in your absence. One thing I have learned over the five years of living here is that despite the fact that they are smiling with you or at you, that doesn't mean that they consider you a friend. It's just part of their culture to be nice and polite to whoever it is. Um, another interesting point about their politeness is their ability to present even the most negative situation in a subtle and pleasant way and say it in the nicest way as much as possible. So they can give you the illusion of choice when asking you to do something. So for example, they can say, please, are you happy to do this instead of our usual Nigerian way of saying, please do this for me. Or instead of responding to a request with a direct no, they will say, I'm afraid I can't do this. Anyway, let me just stop here because the British lingua is a full topic on its own. <laughs> Um, this brings me to my next point, which is diversity and inclusiveness. Um, again, the more north you go, the less diverse the population is. Down south, you will find people of various ethnicity. There are abundance of African shops. Um, in fact, I can make whatever delicacy I want here yeah, because I can find all the ingredients I need. Now, this may not be the case in less diversities you would find up north. Now that we are talking about diversity, I think it would probably be a good time to mention racism as well. Personally, I have not experienced overt racism, although I have experienced several forms of microaggression. And you know what is more interesting about this, my, these experiences I have had is that most of the times they were from non-white Brits. Um, by this I mean second generation immigrants that were born here. Um, with racism too, you'll find that the more not you go, the more likely you are to experience overt racism. The next thing I want to talk about is the standard of living. 
In terms of employment, about 75% of people aged 15 to 64 have a paid job. So you always find a job here. A lot of people who come into the country at the beginning start off with a care job because it is easy to get. When I came into the country for the first few months while I was waiting for my medical license, I did some care jobs. Although there are other jobs such as IT, which is even on the rise, but generally care jobs is very easy to get. The minimum wage here is about ten pounds, which is which in Naira is about fifteen thousand Naira, depending on what the current exchange rate is. Um, but you have to understand that while you're here, um, you're also going to be spending in pounds as well. Um, the average cost of living here for a family of four is over two thousand pounds without rent. As a single person um, or student, it may be about six hundred and fifty pounds without rent. Um, in recent times, with inflation, things have become very expensive. Rent can take a huge chunk of your salary. The average cost of rent is about £1,000 and this can vary from region to region. So generally, it is more expensive down south and cheaper up north. But a lot of people prefer to stay down south because of a more favorable weather condition compared to up north. And then there's tax as well. You can pay as much as 40% tax on your income depending on your salary bracket and in addition to this you may need to pay national insurance on every salary you earn so things are pretty expensive in uk but overall the standard of living is decent the last thing i'm going to talk about today is water and that is because the water in the uk showed me shaggy when i first arrived well, depending on what part of the uk you live in the water can be hard i was living in the east of england at that time and the water was quite hard um, and this gave me a lot of breakout in fact my face turned into something else especially for someone like me that never experienced um, acne in nigeria i didn't even know what was causing the breakout it was later i realized that it was the hard water and this led me to pay more attention to my skin if you check my channel you'll see i do a lot of skincare videos as well so if you're coming to the uk this is something to bear in mind the next question on your mind may be if the water is drinkable a lot of people drink the water straight off from the tap i used to drink the tap water as well until chica bought a distiller so now we drink only distilled water generally the water is safe you can drink it depending on your area of course um without needing any extra purification so that is it for today you guys if you're living in the uk please let me know what your experiences are in the comment section if you're planning to come to the uk or for relocation or just for apc let me know what you've heard about the uk as well in the comment section thank you guys for watching i will see you in the next video Hello.